Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! The Super Mario Bros. Super Show was an animated television series that ran for four months in 1989. However, they released a new episode every single day, which explains why this show was trash. That is so much effort for a television series, let alone an animated one. Which is probably why they started with 15 minutes of live action Mario, followed by 15 minutes of animated sketches. However, every Friday they replaced the live action portion with the Legend of Zelda TV show. <laughs> We're back! And with the success of the Mario movie, The Legend of Zelda was bound to get the same treatment. And I, for one, am extremely excited. I thought the Mario movie was amazing. And with decades of game-based storytelling, The Legend of Zelda can be just as good, if not better. However, they are about to make Zelda talk. I think it's inevitable. So let's take a look at the very first time Zelda had a speaking role. It's weird, he talks like late 70s comedian Steve Martin. Well, that's you! Me! This would be like if the new Zelda was played by Matt Reif. <laughs> Little peek behind the curtain, I started writing the script back in November last year before all of the weird stuff about Matt Reif came out, and I thought about taking him out of the script, but I think it's funnier because in the show, Link is also a perv. Oh boy, smooching time! The Zelda portion was written by Bob Ford, with the entire show being produced by a production company that needs no introduction. Sorry, what was that? One more time. <laughs> Who names a kid company Dick? Bob Ford is actually like a writing powerhouse who helped to manufacture 80s and 90s cartoon television. He wrote on She-Man, He-Ra, wait, <laughs> he wrote for He-Man, She-Ra, was lead writer for Biker Mice from Mars, Beast Wars, Transformers, and The Legend of Zelda. And as with all the other shows I mentioned, Zelda has an inherent queerness to it, which I think is super ahead of its time. Like, you take Link out of the show and put him into a modern day setting, he just becomes an insufferable Gen Z queer. Oh, sorry, one sec. Hello? 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 Oh, the call's coming from inside the house. Last side note, I'm not going to judge it against any of the canon lore to the series because quite frankly the game lore is confusing garbage, don't at me, but also this is the first time I've ever interacted with a piece of Zelda media. Like yeah, I know who Zelda is, he's right here, but other than that, I've never played a single game. So let's see if this makes me a fan. Hey, excuse me princess. The show takes place right after the events of the first two games, with Link and Zelda now living together in Hyrule Castle, because Link has been hired as the Triforce of Wisdom's personal bodyguard. And Link absolutely hates this. He hates his job. Magical kingdom of Hyrule, boring place. I used to roam the world, fighting monsters and sleeping in mud. A hero's life. I don't know the internal politics of Hyrule, but I feel like he could have just said no. However, some moblins attack and he loves fighting bad guys. Killing, it's his favorite pastime, like Dahmer or the Banana Republic. So he's killing bad guys, it's a medieval fantasy show. What do you expect him to use as a weapon? A sword? No, a gun. His sword can shoot laser beams and like apparently this is canon to the game, but I want some sick ass sword fights. If I wanted a gun fight, I'd watch a western. Oh, nothing beats the King of Spades! <laughs> He's got three legs and he can't be beat, it's the King of Spades! The next character we meet is Zelda, who actively ignores all of Link's advances, which you'd think he'd get the hint at this point, but he doesn't. Don't you ever clean in here? 
Excuse me, princess. If I'd known you were coming, I'd have asked the moblins to sweep up before I zapped them. Today, Zelda has to go and judge an amateur wizards contest. The main antagonist of the show is, of course, Ganon, who's trying to steal the Triforce, but is also an incel. It's weird. He even talks like a Discord moderator. Obviously. If I want the Triforce of Wisdom, I'm going to have to get it myself. He also has a jar of evil. Back in the evil jar! And if that doesn't scream incel, I don't know what does. Finally, Ganon only moves through teleportation, which I think is hilarious as a character trait. Like, if he's going to walk anywhere, he has other people carrying him. And, like, it's kind of canon, because in the original games, he only moved through teleportation as well. And it's a really funny way to read NES limitations. Now, there's a lot of triangles in this show, including a love triangle. Zelda doesn't reciprocate Link's advances, so Sprite, a five-foot fairy, tries to get into Link's pants. What? You don't like short girls? Sprite is the best character in the entire show. She is so cunty. I love her. Anyway, Ganon enters the contest and creates a dragon to distract Link away from the Triforce. And it's clear that they spent their entire animating budget on the fight scenes, because for the rest of the episode, the characters will be super good at ventriloquism. My kind of girl! Ganon successfully steals the Triforce, which makes Zelda super mad. So how does Link respond? You're supposed to be guarding the Triforce. Well, excuse me, princess. Yeah, I'm starting to counter because they get to like five per episode by the end of the series. It is awful. One great thing about this show, though, is Zelda is a competent fighter. She's not like a damsel in distress that Link has to save, but rather it's Link and Zelda working together to stop Ganon, and it's great characterization. Zelda and a wizard create a giant tree to slingshot her and Link after Ganon. Completely crazy! Whoa! Whoa! How are we going to get down? What do you mean, princess? This was your idea. Ah! Ganon then calls on a bunch of skeletons to attack Link and Zelda, so they strap themselves back to back to fight them off. This show is so underrated. I often think that feminism has taken a step back in recent years because quite frankly, we have an established formula of what a powerful female lead can be in TV. Much the same way as we have the male superhero stereotype. They're strong, they're powerful, they make a lot of quips. This means that the artist is not given the same amount of room to innovate and experiment because the adorable, confident female protagonist gets butts in seats. And when there's only an artistic motive to change and not a profit-driven one, what reason does a business have to innovate? Anyway, I'm going to step off my soapbox. Whoops. <gasps> anyway, they defeat Ganon and grab the Triforce of Wisdom. And right before Link gets his kiss, Sprite comes in to stop them. I am a Sprite stan. Get it, queen. All in all, I think The Legend of Zelda is a pretty great show. It's got action, it's got comedy. What more could you want? But let's see if my opinion changes after 12 more episodes. <laughs> well, excuse me, princess. As it's a serialized television show, the next episode follows a very similar story structure. Link doesn't want to clean Hyrule Castle, so he fakes a cold to get out of it. And then we find out the Triangle talks. Surely ways do not make one brave. Why does the Triangle talk? I hate it. It never talked in any of the games. It's not supposed to talk. I know I wasn't supposed to compare the games to the show, but this is different. This was a mistake. And I should know mistakes. I'll never look at a fence post the same way again. Zelda is cleaning her room when a bald eagle flies in, so she starts suffocating it. Tell Ganon that next time I'll stick his head into the pile! We find out the eagle works for Ganon and tried to steal the Triforce, but it didn't work, so Ganon zaps Sprite to make her magic ultra-powerful, to create a distraction to steal the Triforce. Link, Zelda, and Sprite chase after Ganon into the underworld, where they fall into another one of his evil jars. Glad you won't be around long enough to appreciate its finer qualities! 
Sprite saves them from the jar, and Link and Zelda grab the Triforce and run, saving the day. All in all, this is another good episode, mainly because it didn't have Link's catchphrase. I can't say that about the next one. <laughs> episode 3 starts out strong with a sick fight scene where Link and Zelda have to defeat an Octorok. Link! Stop fooling around and zap that monster! Hey, excuse me, princess! Wish I could! However, the Octorok almost gets away, but is defeated by a hot prince. I am Prince Facade from Arcadia. The foreshadowing in this show is subtle. Zelda gets the hots for Facade and leaves Link out in the woods. And remember how I said that this show makes Zelda very gay? Uh, this is one of those instances because she moves faster than a lesbian on Tinder and introduces the hot prince to her dad. What was your name again? Sprite, seeing an opportunity, takes advantage of the situation and swoops in on Link to try to get a piece of that ass. Get out of here, I'm taking a bath! I know. You look cute. Need your back scrub? Get it? Swoops. Cause, cause she flies. Link tries to dress fancy like a prince in order to make Zelda interested in him again, but gets made fun of. So Link quits his job and leaves on his mare, Catherine. Let's hit the road, Catherine. Who names their horse Catherine? That horse sounds like it's about to send back its salad because the arugula is too spicy. Anyway, meanwhile in the underworld, Ganon also has the hots for Prince Facade. Oh, Prince Facade has shown a sickeningly handsome face in Hyrule. Ganon has his minions kidnap Zelda and drag her out into a swamp, where we find out that Prince Facade is a facade who refuses to get dirty to save Zelda. However, at the final hour, Link jumps in and saves the day. This episode, eh, it's not that great. Which is okay, because the next episode is probably the best one in the entire series. <sighs> this episode really nails everyone's character with a super simple Frog Prince storyline. Zelda finds a beautiful maiden in distress and runs to save her. Eat these lemons, sourpuss! No fair! Uh, this is all wrong. Beautiful maidens are supposed to be rescued by handsome heroes, not other beautiful maidens. Bars. Link eventually shows up to help fight the Gliok and zaps it. But this anatomy is so bizarre that I have to focus on it. I only have two explanations. A, the two other dragon heads are parasitic organisms that can attach itself to the structure's internal organs, which would mean this. Well, hardcore. Gross. Uh, the other explanation for it is maybe a conjoined triplet situation, where each soul is a different dragon, but that makes Link's sort of medical marvel that could be used to save lives, and he uses it to kill people, which makes him a psychopath. Ganon is terrifying in this episode as he becomes more of an incel. His new plan is to kidnap Zelda in order to marry her and rule over Hyrule, maybe? I'm not sure they didn't explain it that far. I think Ganon is just a creep. Will be at my mercy. To get Link back to normal, Sprite and Link go to find the Witch of the Walls, and the design for the witch is amazing. This is such a cool original character that doesn't appear in any other media. I really hope she comes back for the live action. It would be sick. To stop the curse, Link has to kiss a princess, so he goes to Ganon's dungeon to save Zelda and kiss her. But Ganon stops him before he can, and oh no, what's Link gonna do? Such a hard day! Okay, apparently she's a fairy princess. I don't know why Sprite didn't say anything while she was at the Witch of the Walls. Could have been a good time to do it. It's not a consent thing because she kissed him while he was knocked out. Sprite doesn't know how to offer someone a cup of tea. Anyway, this has no bearing on the rest of the story. On to the next episode. She doesn't speak our language. Oh, I'm sure she and I can communicate somehow. Link is getting ready to swing into Zelda's room, but the king stops him and gives him dating advice. Flowers. Right. Thanks. Good luck, my boy. I expect my grandkids to have your ass. Yeah!
Ganon invades Hyrule Castle, and oh god, he has a pony. Who gave Ganon a pony? Ganon captures the king of Hyrule, who isn't mad, just, just disappointed. I say, that wasn't nice at all. After failing to rescue the king, Link becomes a Ubisoft character. You let my father get captured by Ganon! Hey! Excuse me, princess. I wasn't falling to my death for fun just then. We must rescue my father. Right, right. I was just getting to that part. Take him to the pit room! You won't get away with this, you know. No. Zelda and, um, oh, Link, uh, 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 that's his name, will, uh, uh, rescue me. Link, that's his name. I typically call him Sweet Cheeks after that boy's tight ass. <laughs> <laughs> Link and Zelda enter the dungeon and get attacked by Ganon's minions, only to be saved by a mysterious figure. <laughs> this one has laser sides! <laughs> oh. Her name is Sing. She's from a land far away. Ganon stole her unicorn and she's trying to rescue it! Link, Zelda, and Sing team up to fight Ganon's minions and save Sing's unicorn. Zelda then finds the king in the dungeon. Daddy! I wish Link would call me that too. Ganon and Link fight while Sing rescues the king with her unicorn, and Link uses the Mario Wind Whistle to bring everyone back to Hyrule. As you can see, these episodes get pretty repetitive at this point, so I'm gonna start speedrunning them. Cause that did so well for me last time. Why am I still holding this? Where is Link and Zelda? Hey! Pig face! Throughout the show, the sexual tension between Link and Zelda further, but Ganon can't handle that, so he attacks them with spiders. I'd ask you for a kiss, but it looks like you're all tied up. <coughs> well, excuse me! You idiot! I could have smothered in there while you were playing with those spiders! You mean I don't get my kiss? God damn, how did they predict Gen Z in the 80s? Just a little, oh, sorry. Like, are we that predictable? Ganon uses a giant magnet to suck down the castle. Yes, this is the storyline. And Link and Zelda have to head down to stop him. No, this is an underworld entrance, but I can't get it open! You gotta have the right key. You know what I like about you, Link? Your delicate touch. Excuse me, princess. As with the rest of the series, Link has to fight off Ganon's minions. <laughs> Tell Ganon Link sends his best. He is so gay. Anyway, they then fight Ganon, reverse the magnet in order to bring the kingdom of Hyrule back up to the overworld, and save the day. Yes, you certainly saved the day, my boy. Good show. I figure I deserve a kiss for that, don't you? Eh? Oh, Link, I knew you'd fall for me. <laughs> it's a clone episode. They happen in every show. You know the episode, cause it's a clone. Ganon creates an evil magic mirror and clones Zelda. Evil Zelda kidnaps the real one and uses Link to get the Triforce to Ganon. But Link is suspicious, because this Zelda is promiscuous. Woo-wee! Finally! Kinda colder than I expected. Fake Zelda and Link bring the Triforce over to Ganon's lair. It's heavy! Why don't you make it float like you usually do? Because! Because I don't want to, that's why! Now shut up! Excuse me, princess. Link confirms it's not Zelda through no reflections in the water, and Ganon tries to be a nice guy. Ah, welcome to my humble domain, princess. Kochi Ku! While fake Zelda might not be able to use magic to make the Triforce float, she can make Link sound uncannily like her. Better now. Oh yes, much better. 
Good. Come on. Zelda escapes Ganon's bondage, which is a phrase I never wanted to have to say, and goes to find Link in evil Zelda. Oh boy, here we go. Time for me to deliver this to Ganon. Look, princess, I can explain. Don't talk, move, she's getting away. Excuse me, princess. God, the episodes that are written by Bob Forward are so catchphrase heavy. I hate it so much. Link catches up with real Zelda and escapes Ganon's minions by using a force field ring. Geronimo! Don't you ever do that again without telling me! Well, excuse me, princess! The real Zelda and the evil Zelda fall into some mud, so Link suggests a kissing contest to figure out which one is real. Link, that this imposter. is imposter! And the one who didn't kiss him is the real one, of course. Anyway, they defeat Ganon and leave. You know, princess, you might want to consider a black outfit. Might look pretty good. Oh! Aw, oh, come on, princess. I was just kidding. Well, excuse me, princess. Oh god, it is like one every single four minutes now. And with the rest of the episodes being written by Bob Forward, I'm just going to start front-loading them so we can just get through it before we move on to each episode. Excuse me, princess. Excuse me, princess. Excuse me again, princess. Excuse me, princess. Excuse me, princess. It's nighttime in Hyrule, and we learn that Link has a sleepwalking disorder, where he goes and, oh god, no, Link, you don't have to kill her just because she doesn't want to kiss you. Oh, never mind. He's just a pervert. Some buyers attack and blow up the Triforce to bring it to Ganon, but before they get to him, Link uses his laser sword to shoot through the Triforce, killing the creatures. <laughs> To find the shards, Link and Zelda have to play a game of hot and cold to find the Triforce pieces, and they enter Ganon's dungeon. Whoa! Ropes! Whoa! Bread! They find one of the Triforce pieces at the bottom of a waterfall. Link and Zelda then head to a lava field to grab the second one, but oh no, Ganon comes and tries to stop them. So Link uses shield surfing to get away from Ganon. That's right, shield surfing before Breath of the Wild. People say this is not a great adaptation, but I think it's perfect. Excuse me, princess. Excuse me, princess. Link buys a new sword from a con man and tries to save Zelda with it, but finds out it doesn't work. See, bad durability, just like Breath of the Wild. It's a perfect representation. Link and Zelda get captured by Ganon, who we find out the con man was working for. Ganon double crosses the con man and throws him in jail. I have a rope! So do I! Link and Zelda fight off a giant crab and escape the jail cell. They head back to Hyrule where the Triforce tells them how to defeat Ganon's armada. When magical means will not suffice, use natural means as your device. Huh? What do you mean? I got it! Like a gun! They create booby traps out of bugs to defeat Ganon, and then the con man tries to steal the Triforce for himself, but it was actually secretly just an anthill. The end. Excuse me, princess. Excuse me, princess. Excuse me, princess. It's chore day, and the castle handyman tries to make a chore bot to do the work for him, but it fails miserably. However, Link asks Handyman Doof to create a fake mob and so he can rescue Zelda in order to get out of doing chores. But Zelda overhears and thinks the real moblins are fake, allowing herself to get kidnapped. Yeah, they really take away some of Zelda's agency in the later episodes. But Link does a speedrunning technique from Breath of the Wild, so that's cool. Ganon gets even creepier and has a necklace that can control the wearer, so he gives it to Zelda in order to marry her. Absolutely right. I will marry Ganon. Let the ceremony begin! And the wedding is officiated by the Grim Reaper, I guess? 
Anyway, Link crashes the wedding like a terrible person, but Ganon summons a Gleok to come and stop him, which raises even more questions about their anatomy. So is like the head the actual animal and like the body is just like a stalk, sort of like a mushroom? Um, how does it fly? Link defeats the Gleok, rescues Zelda, and saves the day. Excuse me, princess! Excuse me, princess! Excuse me, princess! It's a hot summer day, and the king sends his men to build a water park for all of Hyrule, but monsters attack. So Link and Zelda head out to investigate, and they find the monsters and fight them. But the king doesn't believe the monsters exist, and goes for a dip. He gets kidnapped. They find a tunnel grate which leads them to an underwater spring that connects to the pond. Link and Zelda learn the Fairy Kingdom, which is ruled by Sprite's father, was sending out the monsters because the water park was disturbing their spring. The two kings agree to share the water park, and Sprite cucks Link. The end. Thank god there's only two more. Excuse me, princess! Well, excuse me, princess! Excuse me, princess! In this episode, Ganon attacks Hyrule with a new magic wand. My new wand of power will allow me to zap her into my evil jar! Ow. Link sacrifices himself but gets zapped into the jar by Ganon, but his spirit stayed and only Zelda can see it. I'm right here! Oh! Huh? Where'd he go? Was he just gonna flick Sprite right there? Zelda goes to save Link's body, but gets attacked by Ganon's minions, so Link has to show her how to use his sword. We learn from Ganon that the only reason Zelda can see Link is because she loves him. Zelda loves me! Zelda loves me! Link gets back into his body, destroys the Jar of Evil, and Link and Zelda escape, saving the day. Excuse me, princess. Excuse me, princess. Ganon's minions try to steal the Triforce, but they foil each other's plans. They come to the conclusion that their true enemy is the ruling class and sees the means of production. After locking away Ganon, the Brotherhood of Underworld Monsters go to storm Hyrule. Unfortunately, or fortunately, they don't know how to organize, which is a lesson we could all learn. With Ganon gone, Link and Zelda go after the Triforce of Power. However, Link has second thoughts. The Triforce of Power! At last, I will have both Triforces, and our kingdom will be safe forever! Hmm, and I'll be out of a job. Link accidentally pops Ganon's bubble, and they're not able to grab the Triforce of Power. Ganon reigns in his minions, and you know what we end the final episode on? An excuse me, me princess! princess. Oh! <laughs> Oh well, at least I still have a job! This show is a weird time capsule of 80s pop culture. It's far from a perfect show, but I really enjoyed watching it, because even existing in the cliches of 80s cartoons, it was trying something a little different every single episode. It was experimenting, and that's a good thing. What I see are people criticizing Nintendo about their Zelda movie before the first trailer even drops, because it's not going to be a one-to-one -one remake of their favorite game, or they don't want it to be made at all because it's not going to be perfect. Nintendo already gave us perfect, and while it was fun, it wasn't great. I really don't want another remake, remaster, or reboot. If you're going to have these old characters and you're going to want to bring them back, put them into a new format. Try to tell a new story, because at least you're trying something new. Hey, maybe it's a little awkward, but creativity is awkward. It's about pushing forward until you find something that works. I personally want the Zelda movie to be great right off the bat, but even if it isn't, it'll lay the groundwork for something even better. But hey, congratulations for making it to the end of the video. Those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. If you have an idea for our video, let me know because I'm having fun making this style of content. I know I tried a lot of other things before, but like, you know what I said, creativity. It's about having those awkward moments and pushing forward until something works. And I like looking into all of this old stuff because you know, you can learn a lot of things about the old stuff and then use it in order to create something new and fun. So, yeah, bye.